Great to see all of you here today. I'm just thankful for my wife. Doesn't she do a good job? Amen. <laughs> I led her astray last week, and I said, this is Mission Sunday, hun, so you got to do the Mission Sunday thing. It was fifth Sunday. So, so her little peccadillo was actually because of me. So I, I claim that one. But, uh, but she does a great job, and, and I'm just so thankful for my wife. Amen. Amen. <laughs> um, Pastor Kerry is, uh, is excited to be coming home, and he's actually, uh, he actually got a chance to minister tonight in Honolulu. <laughs> and he was like, no, we've got to get this flight back to the States. And uh, if, if you know Pastor Kerry, that is probably the biggest temptation that he has on vacation, is that he goes and, and, and gets called to ministry somewhere. Um, and I don't know if Diane has that same calling. No, she, she does want to minister, but, but she wants to be with her husband. And, and uh, I'm just so blessed that they got to be refreshed. And just it's a beautiful place on the planet, and I, I'm just so thankful for that. Amen? Amen. I'm very thankful. Thankful that he's, he's heading home. And uh, we're, just, we're just glad to be a part of what the Lord's doing today, and I'm blessed to be here. If you don't know me, I'm... I'm Jim Hahn, I, I get to do all kinds of things here at Trinity Fellowship Church. Uh, I guess my official title is associate pastor, uh, but I just get to be a part of what God wants done. And uh, I'm just so thankful to be a part of your lives and a part of this church. And uh, just so thankful for what he is doing in these days. And Father God, we just, uh, we just invite you and we just welcome you to do what you desire to do. Just continue to do in our hearts today. We thank you, Jesus, just as we have even sung. Lord, when you come and, and, and you show yourself, Lord, that you change everything. Lord, that we are changed in your presence. And we thank you, Father, for what you are doing. And, and we just pray today that we have ears to hear what your spirit is saying, that we have eyes to see, see what you are showing to us, and that we have open hearts to receive as good soil, the words that you are, are showing forth and, and you are sending forth from the heavens. And we pray that your word would, would go down deep into our spirits and it would cause a great harvest of your kingdom on the inside of us today. Thank you, Jesus, for, for being with us. Thank you that you are our Emmanuel that you are God with us, and today we give you praise. We magnify your name, and we thank you, Jesus, for being here with us. Amen, amen, amen. Uh, this morning, I, <clears throat> I, I want to talk about uh, battles, <laughs> and, and I was just wondering if, if there's anybody in here that's felt like they've been in a battle before. Do you feel like you're in a battle now? then I guess I got the right word from God this week. Um, have you ever been in a battle that you thought you couldn't win? And are you currently in that battle? And there are a few. There are some of us that are still in a battle that, boy, I feel like I've been waging this battle for a long time, and I don't see what I was hoping to see yet. And the Lord was just kind of talking to me about this, and I kind of want to share this, but it reminded me of a, a time when I was a, a kid growing up in, in Minnesota, and it was a smaller town, Waconia, Minnesota. Of course, it was right on a lake, and um, just, just a beautiful place, and I was kindergarten, first grade at the time, somewhere in there. Well, in my, in my mind's eye, I used to walk just miles and miles to school as a little kid. But when we went to visit it a few years ago, we, we went there, and, and I saw where our house was, and I saw where the elementary school was, and it was like four blocks. <laughs> it's funny how your perspective begins to change. And, and I just remember walking to school and, and going to this school, and, and this school was, was kind of a, a tough season in my life. Uh, I got picked on a whole lot, and... And in school, I just remember having, getting in a lot of fights at lunchtime. And I remember being picked on uh, after school. That, that this, this school had 
quite a few grades in it. I think it was all the way up to sixth grade. And so there was a lot of different kids in this school. And uh, I just remember uh, just all types of bullies and getting picked on. And I, I began just not even wanting to go to school. And so I tell my parents, I just want to go to school. I just keep getting picked on. People are just being mean, you know. People, like, jump out of bushes and just punch me for no reason, you know. It was just, <laughs> in my mind's eye, this is all that, that was happening. And, and, you know, as much as I would fight, and, and I would fight, actually. I would stand up for myself and, and try and fight these guys. And to no avail, <laughs> I was not discouraging them at all. It felt like a battle I couldn't win, is what my point is. And eventually my parents said, okay, we're going to send your, old, your oldest brother with you. My oldest brother's name is Paul, and he is 13 years older than I am. So he was either in his last year of high school or was out of high school. And I remember him driving. He drove a Chevy Nova that was jacked up and had these huge wheels in the back, and it had this, you know, it was the days before Flowmasters, but it had this, you know, this incredible exhaust system that was like, you know, you know, it had this real power. And, and my parents said, okay, we're going to send, we're going to send Paul to come and pick you up. And Paul was kind of an intimidating guy and, and he was kind of rough looking. And, uh, you, you know, he played football all, all year through high school and just, just was kind of a tough guy. Well, I remember... <laughs> I remember the day he came, the first day he came, and, and I was, uh, I had some of these kids kind of hanging around me, and I was just waiting for them just to start picking on me again, and I hear his car coming down the road, and these kids all kind of look over, and they're like, what is this, and my, and of course, he's coming down, he's making a big show, too, he's like, run, 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 you know, this kind of stuff, and, and I was like, I was so excited. And it was a little scary, this kind of, this car. And, and my brother kind of, he, he actually got up out of the car. And he was like, come on, Jimmy, you come with me. You know, he's kind of yelling it out. And I was like, yeah, all right, you know. And, and all of these kids around me that, that had been my, these bullies and picking on me, they just began to kind of shrink away. And I was like, yeah, you know, I got in the car and I was like sitting pretty, you know, I was like, yeah, this is pretty good, you know, and he didn't peel out. I wanted him to. <laughs> I was like, I want you to lay rubber from here to our house, you know. <laughs> he didn't go that far, but, but the, the, the effect, it had, it had its needed effect. And and that this battle that I thought could never be won was won in just moments. And, 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 I, and I look at Scripture, and I see there are so many times, and we are called to wage war, and we are called to battle, and, and God, is, God has actually equipped us for battle as well and to take authority. And we do these things by faith. But there are some times when we are we are battling, we are warring, we are doing everything that we know to do, and we're still not winning the battle. And that's what I want to talk about today. I want to talk about these battles, and that when we see these battles, we need to say what all the saints of old said, the battle is the Lord's. The battle is the Lord's. That as much as I want to win this, as much as I'm going to stand and stand firm, it's his battle. And I'm going to let him win it for me. If you turn uh, in your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. And, of course, you know, most of you know exactly where I'm going here. Um, <laughs> But we talk about this, and, and in fact, my kids can tell you, we pray over the, the full armor of God every day as they're going to school, that I want my kids equipped and ready to go. And, and, and I believe that we need to be uh, reminding ourselves of this armor that God has given us and 
be ready because of this scripture. Well, well, well let me begin to read it. And it's Ephesians 6. Let's start at verse 10. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the full armor of God so that you will be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. Notice this word stand, stand firm. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. Where is our battle? Our battle is in the spiritual realm, isn't it? We're not talking about grabbing hold of swords and and AK-47s and all of these things. We're talking about spiritual battles and that God has equipped us with weapons for spiritual battles. Therefore, since you have these battles that you come up against, take on, take up the full armor of God so that you will be able to resist in the evil day. And having done everything to stand firm. Verse 14 then says, stand firm, therefore. Having girded your loins with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. In addition to all, taking up the shield of faith with which you will be able to extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And with all prayer and petition, pray at all times in the Spirit. That he is telling us what he has equipped us with for this battle. But I wanted to point out here, he says, And having done everything, stand firm. That there are times in these battles when we have done everything. I put on the shield of faith. You know, I have the helmet of salvation. I have the breastplate of righteousness. I have... I have the the belt of truth. I have my feet ready with peace. You know, I am fully equipped. I'm praying in the Spirit on all occasions. But I'm not seeing movement. I'm not seeing seeing a, a breakthrough. Well, he says, after having done everything, stand firm. Stand firm. The word is histomy, and it means to remain standing. Or to stand still. And that's why, he's, that's why they, they translate it stand firm. It's a strong place. That I, I, I am fully equipped now and I am standing. And I am going to stand here and believe that, that God is going to bring breakthrough in my life. It reminds me of Exodus, Exodus uh, chapter 14 verse 13. And I really wanted to key on this verse. And it's when Moses is leading out the Israelites out of Egypt. They have seen the the ten plagues. And and finally Pharaoh says, okay, get out of here. And then finally as as Israel is, is exiting Egypt, Pharaoh changes his mind yet again and sends his army to come and and capture and take them and and bring them back. And they come out into the middle of this seamless, seemingly desert, and then they, they, they are confronted with, with the sea that is before them. And it says, it says in, in Exodus 14, verse 13, but Moses said to the people, and, and they're, seeing, they're seeing this army coming up against them, right? They're, they're, they're ready to just devour them, basically. And the people are afraid. But Moses says to the people, do not fear. Stand, stand by and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, you will never see them again forever. The Lord will fight for you while you keep silent. Oh, this is a good word. It stirs me up when I read these words because he's saying, these enemies that you see today, I will accomplish what I want to do today and you will never see these enemies ever again. Anybody ready for that? I am ready for that. 
And he's saying, I want you to stand firm and see the salvation of your God. That there is a place to stand in him believing in what he's going to do. That he is certainly going to bring breakthrough in my life. Where I have seen this onslaught, where I have seen just coming from every direction, that I believe that God is for me. Who can be against me? And therefore, Moses picks up the chorus and says, Stand firm. Stand firm. Be silent. You don't even have to do anything, but just stand firm, and you will see the recompense of the wicked. You will see me accomplish what I want to accomplish. It's amazing to me, I came across uh, this uh, in, it, it was Oswald Sanders, and it's a testimony of a hymn writer, and this hymn writer, she, her name was Frances Havergal, he, and she authored Take My Life and Let It Be. You guys know that one? Take my life and let it be. Okay. And then Like a River Glorious. Like a River Glorious. You know, that was, that was rocking out in the day. Okay. Okay. Anyway, she, she was a hymn writer, and she wrote... Both of these, and, and I know that she wrote some other ones, but she actually had a very quick temper. And, and she would explode at times. And afterwards, she would be mortified and confess it to the Lord, but then she would lose her temper again and again and again. One day after a particularly bad explosion, I'm sure no one else knows what that's like. After a particularly bad explosion, she threw herself down by her bed and wept. She, she prayed, Lord, must it always be so? Will I always have this temper to keep me humble before you? While she was on her knees, the Lord injected a verse of scripture in her mind. The Egyptians who you have seen, and we just read that, the Egyptians whom you have seen today, you will see no more forever. God spoke these words to Moses when the Egyptians pursued him, and we just talked about that. Havergal related the verse to her temper and, and the way in which Satan wanted to use it to pull her into bondage. She saw, she saw that God could take her temper away forever. She asked, Lord, could it be? Could it be forever? It seemed to her that the words came back to her from the Lord, and she heard, yes, no more forever. Her sister said that from her sister, that's good you get testimony of the sister because she was probably the brunt of the explosions. Um, <laughs> it says, her sister said from that day, Frances Havergal never again lost her temper. She believed God and God did a miracle. I was just so amazed that I came across this verse. I, I mean, this, this testimony of, of this hymn writer, and it was just exactly this verse that she was, that God was relating to her that I want to do these things in your life forever. I want to cut these things off forever. That I don't want these things to be, uh, to be cloaking you in any kind of intimidation, fear, shame. That I want these things broken for good for all time. That is the heart of our God. Amen? Sometimes there's battles in, 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 in all kinds of areas. And that's what I want to I, I get our attention to, that we can have battles in, in every area of our life. And, and God wants to come into those places, and he wants to bring breakthrough. Healing, um, provision, relationships, unsaved loved ones. Just even just specific demonic attacks, repeating cycles and patterns that you've seen in your life that are, that are negative, that are, you know are not from God. That there's intimidation and shame, which I just mentioned. God wants to break these holds on us. 
if we will stand and see his salvation. Now, certainly, I'm not telling you you don't need to do anything. I'm saying after you've done everything, stand firm in him. What does it look like to stand firm in him? There's all kinds of testimonies in Scripture of the saints standing firm. When in the midst of just these incredible obstacles, these armies coming against them, especially in Israel, you see them, they just, all they can do is stand and believe their God. Jehoshaphat was one of them. (laughs) Jehoshaphat, the armies were coming against Israel. And they were about to wipe them off the planet. And it, Jehoshaphat says, do not fear or be dismayed because of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours but God's. And what did he do? He began to send the, uh, he sent the worshipers ahead of the army. We'll get to that in just a minute. David said to Goliath, he says, how dare you challenge the people of Israel. How dare you try to intimidate them? He says, the battle is the Lord's. That the battle's not by one, by spear and sword, but it's battle, it's it's a battle that's won in the name of the Lord our God. That we have all kinds of battles that we can be Uh, coming up against, but the Lord says, if you will stand firm, you will see me come and break these things off. There are five, well, there's plenty of ways to stand, but there there was specifically five things I wanted to point out to how to stand. How do we stand in this place? And last week I talked about love wins. I'm not going to revisit that one again, but we need to stand in love. I'm just going to say that right out. You need to stand in a place of love, of his love and of love for others. Stand in that place. Stay in that place and don't let anyone move you from it. Don't let offense, unforgiveness, betrayal, woundedness, hurt, anything. Don't let it take you out of that place. Stay in that place. And saying that, I want to get into (laughs) the places that that I believe that we need to stand in to see God come and bring breakthrough. The first one is to stand in him. And we have to. It says in in Psalm 40, uh, verse 2, it says, He pulled me out of the miry clay and set my feet on a rock. I need to stand on a firm place. I need to stand on a firm place. And if I'm going to stand firm, I have to stand on a firm foundation, right? The only place that I can stand is in him can't stand in my own stuff, in my own thinking, in my own uh, desires and, and, and what I want. I have to stand in what he desires and what he wants. The scripture tells us in, in, in Romans, fix your eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of your faith. The author and the finisher, the one who began it, the one who's going to finish it. I need to fix my eyes on him. In Psalm 145, verse 5 and 7, 5 to 7, it says, On the glorious splendor of your majesty and on your wonderful works, I will meditate. Men will speak of the power of your awesome acts, and I will tell of your greatness. David is saying in there, he's like, you need to get your eyes focused. You need to set your mind on who God is and what he does. Because that's going to be a strong place for you. That if I can set myself in him and who he is, he is the the ruler of all the earth, the creator of the universe, maker of heaven and earth, maker of all things. He knows who are his, that he is our God, that I need to stand in him. I need to stand in that strong place in, in Christ. There is a, there was a testimony of a woman, and it was not in the most recent Charisma magazine, but it was a, a testimony in, I, I think, probably the, the month before. But it was a woman who had been in a wheelchair for years and years. And she gives this testimony. She says, you know, I just, I, I just kept praying and believing and trusting in the Lord. And one day she was in her house all on her own, and she fell out of her wheelchair. And she was just laying there on the floor. And she said, I, I just continued to call in the name of Jesus. I just continued to, to ask him to come. 
just, I, and I knew he was with me, and I just began to just, I just kept loving on him, even there on the floor. She said as she was doing that, this rushing wind began to blow in her living room. In this room, she just began to see everything just, it's just this wind. She's hearing this rushing wind. And then she felt her body just begin to change. She says, <laughs> there on the floor, she just sat up and stood up. It just began to walk around. <laughs> and she was just astonished at what God had done in just an instant. And all these years... And here he just came in like a flood and raised up his standard in her life. And she said, she said, I'm still just loving Jesus. That if we will stay in him, if we would just stay in him and continue to call on his name, that he will break in. The second thing, we stand in praise. You know, this is, a, this is a house of praise. We love to praise and, and worship the Lord here. And, and when we praise God, we know that there is something that happens. We know that there's something that happens to us. We can feel it. You can feel it. There's things that change in me when I come and I praise the Lord. But you know, there's things that are happening to the heart of God when you praise. There are some things in the way that we stand stirs God to say, ah, oh, I'm about to do something. That we can stand in that way. That there's all kinds of stands that the saints made in the Old Testament that says like, oh, God, God's ready to move. Remember when Stephen was even being stoned. It says that the heavens opened up and Jesus, seated at the right hand of God, was standing. Saying, this is my son. <laughs> that, that we move the heart of God with what we do on the earth. That we can stir him up. It says, in, 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 I'll give you a scripture. Isaiah 42, 10. 10 to 14. Let me get a background of, of Isaiah. Isaiah was a prophet of, and, and he was prophesying during the time when, when Jerusalem was just ready and was being taken into captivity. They were overrun by the Assyrians. The Assyrians were just, uh, at the beginning, they were about to, and then working through, they did. They came and grabbed hold of them and were taking them uh, to Babylon. And it says, it says in Isaiah 42, Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing his praise from the end of the earth. Get the picture. This is, they're in turmoil. They're in trouble. And this is the word that Isaiah is giving them. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing his praise from the end of the earth. You who go down to the sea and all that is in it. You islands and those who dwell in them. Let the wilderness and the cities lift up their voices. The settlements where Kedar inhabits. Let the inhabitants of Selah sing along. Let them shout for joy from the tops of the mountains. Wow. That's something. That's a lot of praise, isn't it? This is not praise because I'm feeling good. Because everything is fine. This is praise in the midst of turmoil. He says, let them give glory to God and declare his praise in the coastlands. And what happens? It says, the Lord will go forth like a warrior. He will arouse his zeal like a man of war. He will utter a shout. He will raise a war cry. He will prevail against his enemies. See the correlation here. People in trouble and turmoil, in difficulty, in struggle, in battle, are crying out the name of their God. And it says that God was aroused. His passion and his zeal was stirred. And God steps into the situation, and he makes a shout. And the world reverberates 
with what he desires. It began with someone singing. These are the weapons of our warfare. That, no, we don't have howitzers and we don't have bazookas. We have infinitely more powerful weapons. The weapons of praise and worship and prayer. David says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strong place in my life. Whom shall I be afraid? We know that David was a, was, was a warrior, don't we? we? Well, he went up against Goliath. You know, before he went up against Goliath, you know what he was? He was a paid worshiper. Before King Saul, he went to Saul, and in fact, his worship was warfare for Saul. That David would come and he would worship the Lord in Saul's presence. And it says that the spirits that were tormenting Saul would flee. So before David even came up and and challenged the armies, (laughs) he was a worshiper. This is what God got God's attention. This is why David was anointed king. That he was a worshiper. I remember, I, I think that we need to, to grab hold of this, and, and we know this here, but we need to really grab hold of this in, in the hardest, most difficult times in your life. Praise needs to come out of your mouth. It is powerful and effective. I remember for months and months and months, in my own prayer time, I was singing, Thou, O Lord, art a shield about me. You're my glory. You're the lifter of my head. And I would sing that, and the chorus goes, Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You're the lifter of my head. And I would sing that song, and I would be lifted. I would be strengthened. And this was a time in our life when we were believing God for a child, for a miracle baby. And we had had miscarriages. We had two miscarriages, and the doctor said, you will never carry another baby full term. get up and I would sing that song and God would meet me every single time that that is the power that we have that's how we stand we stand in praise and we saw the fulfillment come we saw the baby our 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 miracle baby our Abigail And we praised God all the while. We need to stand in praise. Second thing is we we stand in faith. Believe that God's going to come to your rescue. Believe that it's going to happen. You have to believe. James tells us you cannot doubt. Because if you doubt, you're just a double-minded person. You're just double-minded and shifty in all your ways. You just, you can't stand on that place. Well, maybe he is, maybe he's not, uh, you know. We have to stand in faith. And I think of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But what I really like about this, you know, we see them standing in faith. And and in Daniel chapter 3, verse 16, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to Nebuchadnezzar the king, Oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to give you an answer concerning this matter about bowing down before if it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the, from the furnace of blazing fire, and he will deliver us out of your hand, O king. He will deliver us out of your hand. They were standing in faith, but the picture, I just, I just love this picture. They were standing in faith, and they were standing together. They stand, let's stand in faith together. I'm so thankful for a bunch of the prayer warriors we have in the house. I'm thankful for that, that when, when there is a need, we don't stand alone. We stand together. This is how we stand together. This is how we love one another. This is how we see the goodness of God come. You know, 
I, I'm not all that formidable. I'm not all that scary. But you put Steve up here. You put Josh. Uh, you put Larry. You put, you put Rick. You put a bunch of these guys up here standing behind me. That's intimidating. What are these guys up to? When they're all with me in prayer, powerful things happen. I see, I see in my mind's eye, where do you think uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, uh, as they were walking into the furnace, where do you think they were in relation to each other? Somehow, I don't think that they were, they were separated from each other very far. I feel, in my mind's eye, and, and, and I know it's not specific, you don't have to hang your hat on this doctrine, okay? Um, but I just see them, we're going in this together. We're standing before the king together, we're going into the furnace together. What do we know happens in the furnace? Oh, looks like a son of the gods is in there with him, the king says. That God is moved. He is moved by our faith. He is moved that we are standing together. We're going to stand firm and believe and trust our God. Our God will deliver us from your hand, O King. That's how we stand. (laughs) Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him, and he will do it. We need to magnify the Lord and not magnify the problem. Magnifying him in all things, magnifying who he is, and we diminish the problem. Just even as the Lord was showing me today that this huge mountain that I see before me, and I think, oh my gosh, how could this be moved? How could it be cast into the sea? Give it to me, and it's simple. You just ask me, and it's cast into the sea. No problem for me. That this is, this is who he wants us to trust in. A God who, who, who we know will come. Fourth thing, we need to stand. Stand with our words. And I, I guess I want to say on this one, we just don't want to, we don't want to derail what God is doing in our life by things that we are saying. I know that, I, I know that we need to stand on the word, and that's, that was something that we could go through, but we talk about the word in this place. We need to stand with our words, with the words that are coming out of our mouths. That I don't derail, well, you know, this is just kind of what I grew up with. You know, it's, it's just always been like this. Or, you know, it just kind of runs in my family. Or, you know, maybe, I don't know if God just really wants to do this. I don't know if God really wants to heal me. Can you show me where anyone came to Jesus and asked for healing? And he said, no. Just show it to me. I don't see it in Scripture. I don't see a God that desires sickness and illness and cancer and, 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 and disease to be upon you. That's not who he is. We need to stand with our words. And in fact, I love this, and we're coming into the Christmas season. Zacharias, the angel appears, Gabriel, comes to Zacharias, and he says, Zacharias, i got great news for you. Your, your wife is going to conceive. And that, and that there is a Savior who is coming as well. And, and Zacharias is like, What? Verse 18, Luke 1, 18, Zechariah says to the angel, How will I know this for certain? For I am an old man, and my wife is advanced in years. Have you seen her? No. The angel answered and said to him, I am Gabriel who stands in the presence of God. Okay, you're, you're getting the dander up on Gabriel here. What did he say? He said, well... How can I know that this can really happen? Was that a faith statement? No, it's not a faith statement. The angel says, I am Gabriel who stands in the presence of Almighty God. And I have been sent to speak to you and to bring you this good news. And you're going to receive it whether you like it or not. 
I mean, I can almost feel Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God. I know what I'm talking about. How can I know that this is really going to happen? I mean, I, I'm not trying to throw Zacharias under the bus. I think we all do this from time to time. I think that's why we need these stories. Because we have been here in these places where God has said something to us. Oh, well, how can I really know? I really need a confirmation on this, God. Okay, let's move on. And, and, and okay, and this is the, not, not, not that I'm saying this is bad, but, and behold, you shall be silent and unable to speak until the day when these things take place, because you did not believe my words, which will be fulfilled in their proper time. What Gabriel did to Zacharias was a good thing. Because he was going to derail the promise of God with his mouth. That Gabriel was being, bringing blessing to him because he couldn't speak. I'm taking away your speaking privileges until this thing comes to pass. I think that there are some times that he needs to slap my mouth like that. What are you saying? Allow the Spirit to remind you. Oh, yeah, I have a mic here. Allow the Spirit, allow the Spirit to remind you. What are you saying? What's coming out of your mouth? Are you in agreement with God? Are you saying what He is saying? Because if you're not saying what He is saying, then don't say anything. Out of the mouth, the heart speaks. The eyes of the Lord are roaming to and fro, seeking whom he might, seeking whose hearts are completely his, that he might come and fully support them. He is looking for hearts. Well, if our hearts are saying, well, I'm not sure God is going to do this, that's not a heart fully committed, fully involved in what God wants to do. That's a heart that's eh, it's not solid. It's not standing firm. He's coming to aid those whose hearts are completely his. Let my heart reflect really what's going on. The, reflect the, the trust that I have in him. <clears throat> Second Chronicles 32. Hezekiah gathered all Israel together. And uh, again, the armies of Assyria are coming against them and about to wipe them out. And, and Hezekiah brings them together. And, and he says... He says, be strong and courageous. Do not fear or be dismayed because of the king of Assyria, nor because of the horde that is with him. For the one with us is greater than the one with him. With him is only an arm of flesh. But with us is the Lord our God to help us and fight our battles. And the people relied on the words of Hezekiah, king of Judah. The people relied on those words that were spoken. That when we speak things, especially if heads of household or just you have influence in people around you that when you speak things that are not from God, that they, they take that. They can receive that. And if it's a good word, then they can stand on it. If it's not a good word, it, it can kind of derail them. That the people relied on the words of Hezekiah. The fifth thing, stand in prayer. And that was at the end of this whole passage in, in in Ephesians, it said, pray at all times. Just keep praying. That we need to pray and believe that God is going to break through. That Psalm 5.3, it says, In the morning, O Lord, you will hear my voice. In the morning, I will order my prayer to you and eagerly watch. In the morning, I will pray to you and I will watch. I will be ready for you to move. I wanted to share this, this testimony uh, just to kind of in closing. And I think it just wraps up everything uh, in this, in this eight-year-old boy. Valerie's nephew, uh, who's eight years old, um, just recently he's been having a lot of problems with going to the bathroom, having accidents just during the day and uh, wetting his pants, you know, just five times, six times a day. And it was just awful. 
And so his parents were like, what are we going to do? I mean, this is just terrible. And they, they were praying about it, and they were like, well, I guess we're just going to go to the doctor. So they end up going to the doctor. So they go to the doctor, and, and he was a premature baby. And, and sometimes this can kind of happen in, in, in premature babies. But, but there's tissue, tissue in, in the tubes allowing us to go to the bathroom, the, the urethra, that there, there's tissue that can form in there, and it can be like little fins and things, but it, it keeps stuff from happening the way it needs to happen. And the, the bladder can back up and a lot of different things, and then just all of a sudden, boom, and then you, you have to evacuate, you know. Um, anyway, <laughs> just have to be careful with all my words here. Um, <laughs> bless your hearts. Uh, so they went to the doctor, and they did a sonogram of these tubes, and they saw what the problem was. And, and the doctor came back and he said, well, you know, we've seen this before, and what we need to do is go up, and, and, and it's kind of like an auger, and go up and clear out those tubes. You're like, all right, you know. So <laughs> so like, okay. So like, tell us, just let us, let us know when you want to schedule a surgery, and we'll, we'll get it done. I'm like, okay. So... So he goes back home with his mom, and while they're driving back home, uh, they begin to talk about what just happened and what the doctor had said. So she asks, she asks this eight-year-old, she says, well, what do, you, uh, do, do you know what they're saying? And he was like, oh, well, yeah, yeah, they want to do surgery. She's like, yeah, they, they want to come and clean out those eye surgery. And, and, and she's like, well, what do you think about that? He was like, yeah, well, no, I don't think I'll do that. He's like, you know, Jesus is one step ahead of me. He's like, no, he's actually five steps ahead of me. Then he gets to thinking about it. He's like, nope, he's actually 2,014 years ahead of me. That he went ahead of me and he took care of all this. And I just want to, I just want to believe, I, I, I just want to pray and, and I'll just be healed. And that's what we'll do. That's the better plan. And, and his mom was like, okay, well, let's go home and talk to dad about this. So they went home and they talked to dad and they prayed together. I said, okay, great. We're, we just believe in healing. Well, the doctor's office wanted to hear some report. They wanted to know what was going on. And so... The mom calls the doctors, and, and she says, well, you know, we're, we're not going to schedule the surgery. And they're like, what? What are you talking about? You, you know what can happen? You know, this is, this is awful. You could ruin a kidney. You know, all these things that could happen. And, and she says, well, yeah, you know, uh, what I really want to do and what, what we want, what we, what we believe is that we just, we want to come in, and we want you to do another sonogram. Like, um, okay, yeah, we can do that. Why don't you just come on in, and we'll do the sonogram. So <laughs> they end up going back to the doctor. And on the way to the doctor, the mom was talking to her 8-year-old son again. He says, so, do you know what we're doing today? And he said, yeah. We're going to the doctor, and they're going to take a picture, and they're going to they're take a picture of, they're going to look at the tubes again, and they're going to see that there's nothing there. And she said, yes, you're right. So they went to the doctor, and they get in there, and the doctor's office was uncharacteristic, uncharacteristically uh, just kind of nice and kind and say, okay, well, let's, we're going to do this sonogram today. And the doctor comes in, and he says, oh, I'm sure everything is going to be just fine. And you're like, is he sarcastic or is he speaking faith? Is, you know, what is happening here? And so they go in and they do, they do the sonogram. And sure enough, there's nothing there. There's no tissue. He is perfectly fine. There is no, no signs of anything in these tubes. And in fact, he, he leaves from there and doesn't have any more accidents like he was having before.
that, that this eight-year-old boy, I think, could teach us the power of words, the power of prayer, the power of standing. How are we standing? What are we doing in, how, in, in our stand? And is it, is it stirring the heart of God? Are we rousing the passion of the Lord to say, yep. You know, when I was told the story the first time, I remember him saying to his mom, Jesus is one step ahead of me. (laughs) I knew as soon as he said that, that there was healing on the way. Because it was just pure love pure trust, pure faith, pure belief. You know what? I'm trusting in Jesus, and he's going to meet me there. Lord, I thank you. I thank you that you are the God in whom we trust. I thank you that those who trust in the Lord, they are not disappointed. Lord, I thank you that I I even thank you for the battles that have yet to be won because we are going to win them in Christ. We are standing in you and we will, we will see the goodness of God in the land of the living. We will see the goodness of God come into our circumstance. We will see your glory revealed to us in powerful and wonderful ways. If there is a, if there is a battle or a struggle that you are, uh, you are coming against and you're, you're wanting for breakthrough, I'm going to ask you to stand. I just want to pray over you. Lord Jesus, you see our hearts. You see, you see even the end from the beginning. Lord, I thank you today that we declare you are God. We declare that you are the Lord in whom we trust. We declare that you, you even go before us. You have made the way. And we say thank you. We say thank you. Thanks be to God who always causes us to triumph in Christ Jesus. I speak this over every person here that is going through a battle and a struggle. We declare with our own mouths, we say thanks be to God, who always causes us to triumph in Christ. These are the words that we stand on. These are the words we say. These are the words to which we praise your name, O God. Glory to God in the highest, (laughs) and on earth peace, good will toward men. Lord, this is your heart's desire. Lord, I just speak the glory of God be in these people's lives. I declare that as, as there is breakthrough, Lord Jesus, that you are breaking through with your love, breaking through with your passion, breaking through with your glory that you are bringing breakthrough where there hasn't been breakthrough before. We trust in you, O God, today. And we stand firm. And having done everything, we stand firm. Because we can stand firm in you. saying, will I not open the windows of heaven because of my great love for you? That the windows of heaven are at the Lord's disposal. (laughs) They are opened at his desire. So Lord, I thank you. I thank you that even even as Daniel prayed, believing in the salvation of of Israel prayed believing 
that they would be released to go back home. Lord, that, that even as Daniel was praying, that you said to Daniel, I sent, I sent the answer the first day, Daniel. That I even sent the warring angel Michael to make the way so that this answer would come and, and, and be fulfilled in your life. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your desire to fulfill all good things on behalf of your people. And I declare that over each one that's standing here today. Fulfill the good word that you have spoken to them, O oh Lord, that they are victorious in Christ Jesus. I declare over them and I label them as victors. You are a victor in this place where you have only felt defeat and discouragement and despair. I declare victory in that place today. That I declare victory and I, I even say that it pierces like an arrow. It's piercing you. It's going to the deepest place within you that in the core of your being, you know that you are a victor. And I thank you, Jesus, that it's because you are the victor, that we are victors. Jesus, we magnify your name in this place and we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for victory. We thank you for victory, oh God. And we praise your name, hallelujah. Would everyone else please stand? Father God, we just thank you. Thank you for all of the blessings all of the promises and blessing are ours in Christ Jesus. And Jesus, we receive you today. We receive you as our Lord and our Savior. We receive you as, as our healer and coming King. We receive you as the author and finisher of our faith. We receive you today and we thank you for your presence in our lives. Now may grace, peace, and mercy be with you both now and until Jesus returns riding on the white horse. Praise your name. Amen. Hallelujah. You are dismissed. I'm going to ask the prayer team, would you just please come forward? And if you would like us to pray with you, we want to pray with you today. If you, if, if you want more prayer for breakthrough, we just want to pray with you. We want to stand together. Stand firm together in faith, believing on your behalf. So just come on forward and we'll pray with you. Bless the Lord. You are dismissed.